that when I found that out, I ain't know what to think, man. My mind was just all over the place. I went back to the building, sat down on the staff for a little while, had my head down. My cousin was sitting there patting me on the back, trying to console me. But I knew I had messed up. I knew I had messed up. And like I said, they had a police station in 365. And after a while, after talking to a lot of guys, saying my goodbyes, I actually took it upon myself to go to the police station and I turned myself in. I walked right through the front door. The officer let me know, he, uh, the officer buzzed me in. When I got in there, I walked up to the front desk and I said, I heard y'all was looking for me. And the officer looked at me, he was like, who is you? I'm like, my name is Rodney L. Dennis. I told him my name and when I told him my name, he said, oh yeah. Come on around here. And I walked around the counter. He took and placed me in this little bullpen they had up in there. And I sat there for like an hour waiting on the detectives from Bell Money Wester to come back down there. And when they came, they transported me from here to Bell Money Wester. That was the last time I seen the streets for 20 years. I started out in 1100 South Hamilton. I went to St. Charles. Then to Lou Joliet, from there I went to Big Joliet. And that's what it was for 20 years, man. I spent 20 years physically incarcerated for that crime that I committed out here in 1992. Every time I come through here, man, I get emotional because I think about that little kid, man. I think about that little kid and what his last moments was. You know, what type, what type of questions did he ask? Did he yell out for somebody? Did he ask for forgiveness or for whatever he may have done? I don't know. I think about those things all the time, man. And when I come through here, like I say, I get real emotional, man. I get real emotional. Because, I mean, that kid didn't deserve to die. And that's what I be trying to teach these little kids out here now, man. You have to value not only your life, but the lives of the people around you. It's imperative that you do so. You see what I'm saying? Because we out here fighting for nothing. There's no future in what we're doing. These lives, these older guys tell us about how, you know, we can get out here and get this money and we're gonna be taken care of. How you doing? We're gonna be taken care of and we got your back. Them ain't nothing but lies, man. Cause when you go to prison and you doing that time, the only people that's gonna be there for you is your family. Your family gonna be there more so than anybody else. What you thought was your friend or your homie, cats who had love for you, cats ain't got love for you. And if you didn't know, you will know once you reach that jailhouse. No letters, no money orders, no visits. It's just you doing that time. And it's hard, man. I was one of the roughest cats out here, man. One of the roughest young cats they had out here, man. That place down there broke me. That place down there broke me. If I didn't have my family support me the way they did, I'd have probably died in there, man. Emotionally, mentally, I'd have probably died, man. I'd have gave up because it was hard. Just imagine a 13-year-old kid, man. I left these streets, man. My mother was taking care of me buying me everything I needed, cooking all my food. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to earn. She did all of that for me. So I left here, went there, and had to start doing all this stuff on my own. Plus, I had to learn how to survive in jail now. The only thing I could say that was good about that, me having to survive, is that I wish the buildings were still here so you can see how they were situated. If you looked at the buildings, the complexes that we had, and you look at the galleries in the prison, they look just alike. And as I started growing and maturing, I started looking at my old neighborhood and comparing it to where I was at, and I'm like, damn, they was preparing us for this a long time ago. 
They were setting us up for this. I hate to try to blame somebody else for my situation or what happened to me in life, but this it, it was a it was a setup, man. And I fell right into the trap, and most of us do because we don't know what we up against. And I try to explain this to these kids, man. Don't give your life up. For, don't give your life up for this, man. Don't give your life up for this, man, because it's not worth it. It's not worth it, man. We are, we're out here dying young. Those that are not dying are going to prison. And if you don't go to prison, the end of the results is you standing out here addicted to drugs. You're a crackhead. That's what you become, a crackhead, an uneducated crackhead. And that's the only future that we have, man, living out here on these streets, doing the things that we doing. And I just pray to God that the work we doing with brothers standing together, man, and this new program that we have going on, and the men that are stepping up, I just pray to God that we able to really reach these kids, man, and save them, man. Because we out here, we not going nowhere. Brothers standing together is real. The work we doing is real. And the people we deal with are real. We are here to change lives, man. To save lives and make a difference in a community that we stole so much from. We're not even looking at what we lost here. We're just looking at the fact that we took so much from this particular community. You know? And it's time for us to give back, man. It's time. That's why I wish, you know, some of these brothers that are standing out there, they look at us and they try to criticize us. Oh, y'all think y'all better than us? No, we're just doing different. We're doing something positive while you wasting your life. You're one of the ones who want to keep these little brothers thinking that there's a future in this. You're one of the ones who want to put a gun and drugs in these little brothers' hands, you know? so they can uh, work for you and get you where you want to be financially. And if it's like that, then why don't you come out here and do it yourself?